Yo, what's up everyone? This is Will Fox. Um, if you don't know, I do Undernight and Birth covers on YouTube and piano tutorials. So today is a special video. Um, so this, because of my recent success in um, uh, Patreon, uh, Neo, Neo Stellar specifically is, is the person who suggested that I do a character select breakdown video like I've done with my other Undernight Birth things. I, I, I believe I've done one with Orie and Batista. Uh, but so I already have other videos showing me playing the theme, but I wanted to make this video where I could show you the fingering that I use and a better clear picture as to what's going on. I basically wanted to break down the song. So um, so I don't do this that often, and this is something that I, I'm likely going to do for Patreon uh, members exclusively. So please consider um, you know, pledging over there if you found this uh, useful. Anyways, let's get started. Um, the first thing I think about with any song before I even uh, I mean, if I'm playing a song is I think about what key it's in. So this is in the key of G sharp minor on the screen. You'll see that there is five sharps uh, on the staff to my left. So that's kind of like the, the key of B, but it's also like they share the same notes. So G sharp minor is, is, is the one. And in this song, we start off with an arpeggio on the five, your D sharp. Um, so the way that I do this is that, um, so you're just going to focus on these four notes. And you're just going to repeat them. And the fingering that I use is, I kind of cheat, I use my left hand to give myself a little bit more time. And I even use my thumb two times in a row. And I'm using my sustain pedal to like hold all the notes. Uh, but um, I do that so that my thumb is on this G, AKA F double sharp, but we're not going to get into that can of worms. Just know that you're going to be using your, um, these first three, uh, excuse me, <laughs> first four fingers. <laughs> in three different octaves of the exact same positioning. So it's just a matter of getting the um, the muscle memory to like, to, to get that seamlessly. So if you're having um, problems with the intro, just practice doing this. And once you're able to do it, um, you're, you're basically able to do it. So you can even uh, go as far as to do like, or whatever you think is comfortable. I personally just like having the same consistent, especially when there's um, um, four fingers. So anyways, the beginning is. So you could voice this part in many different ways too. And that's the cool thing about, um, this is why I recommend reading sheet music. Um, or at least learning the theory behind stuff. Um, Cause you can also do it like, it's just a matter of what you like to hear and how you like to uh, play it. But in fact, I'm gonna play this in a really like bare minimum way. Uh, I'll, I'll just play that through real quick. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> so that don't pay attention to my finger too. I should have been doing it like this, but I personally don't like playing it like that. My my left hand hates playing like chords like that. <laughs> Anyways. Um, the way that I think about the melody, uh, well, first, the first thing I think about 
is the chord progression. So with my left hand, um, I remember that we're going to go from your one, your G sharp minor, to your seven, to your F sharp, to your six, to your um, E, and then we're gonna skip your five. We're gonna go straight to four, which is your C sharp minor, and then we're gonna go to your five, and we're gonna use major instead of minor on this. So, um, and so on. So as far as the melody, um, the way that I break that down is I think about melodies are kind of, uh, it's just a matter of like, there's many different ways to like remember how to play something. Um, I actually don't always play by ear. I just do stuff based on like memory. I, I remember, um, um, so you might hear me say like the one, the seven, the six mm -hmm. and so on, because I'm always thinking about in terms of the relationship between um, your um, your first note. So that's why I pay attention to what the key is first, because everything builds on top of that. That's why it's really important. So I think about how this starts on five, another five, and then we resolve to this two or nine, whatever. Um, seven plus two is nine. That's why sometimes you might see like the same note called that. Those are like extended chords. I'm not gonna go um that deep into that but um anyways i i think about those points and i think about how do i get there so i think about this is the first note and i think that okay so i start um two notes below or rather a whole step below and i like um chromatic climb all the way up to it and then we go up an octave and this next section, I just think about how it always feels like I'm resolved or everything's uh, centered around this note again, this A sharp. And then I think about um, um, like this E, E major seven. So I think about this D sharp specifically as the melody note. And you can like, uh, which is pretty useful if you want to free up like space in your hand. You don't need to play like the chord like this. Since my bass is um, handling this E, it still represents the chord. So you could just leave out the E and you could like voice it like that instead. That's what I mean about there's many different ways to play the same thing. Um, So as far as when I'm traveling, um, if you're really familiar with the key of B B major or um, G sharp minor, um, then like then like I I remember what notes I don't touch. I don't think about like these. I don't think about that. Or well, I would think about um, um, E, but basically being very familiar with the foundation of the um, of the key signature really helps you uh, remember what to play because you don't think about what would even sound right, right? So, but sometimes you do dip into um, keys that you don't naturally have in your original key. So the next section actually. Um, does that so um, once you're at so you're just going down so this is a D which is not found in um in a B um, and then you just you just clean up the same way that you've been doing everything else up to this point so we've always been going to like um what C sharp to um um, D sharp. You could do the seven. 
So that's like the very basics. So I hope that all helped. That's basically the whole video. So I'm going to play it through one time so that um, you can see how I personally play it. So if you get to a certain point where you get the basics and you want to like, um, like study my style a little bit, then this part's for you. Um... So thank you very much. Um, thanks again, Neo, for the suggestion. So I do want to make more videos like this uh, alongside with my usual content. So um, again, I have extra files and extra goodies on Patreon. So there's a link in the description, all that stuff. So without anything else, oh, please comment in the, in the section like anything that you might have any problems with or anything that wasn't clear or just basic criticism to you. I, like I said, I do want to make these as easy as possible for uh, other people to be able to play the, this music. So I wish you all the best. And um, just a bit of advice, when you're learning something, you're going to fail a lot. And eventually, like if you, if you just get to a certain point in a day and you get frustrated, like it's okay, just come back to it. And then you'll be able to like push past that part where you got like stuck at. So that's, basically how I got um, to the um, level that I am right now. So thank you, and I'll see you guys next time.